G'day readers, vampire lovers, lovers of the gothic, lovers of the Victorian age. This is Dan Abramson from Austi Classics, publisher of Great Books, speaking to you from Sydney, Australia. Today I'm talking about Florence Marriott's best-known novel, The Blood of the Vampire. Best known, but still not very well known, and completely eclipsed by the vampire greats Dracula by Bram Stoker and Camilla by Sheridan Le Fanu. The author, Florence Marriott, lived in London from 1833 to 1899 and The Blood of the Vampire was published in 1897. It is set in a French-speaking Belgium seaside resort. The main protagonist is Harriet Brandt. Does our author Marriott want us to like Harriet Brandt or not? I think yes, because Brandt is sweet, innocent and enthusiastic about everything she sets her eyes or hands on. It's an unusual vampire story because so much of the vampiric is unspoken and not even confirmed. Is the vampire actually a vampire? Or are we all just being irrational and seeing the supernatural, which obviously can't be real? Marriott drip feeds tidbits about Ms. Brandt, who she is, where she's from, and the bite-sized discoveries of the other well-to-do holidaymakers about Brandt and their gossip. Margaret Pullen is encountered by Harriet Brandt and feels ill almost immediately. We meet Mademoiselle Bremont, who attended the same convent school as Brandt and shared a cabin on the steamer, steamer over from Jamaica to England. We learn that Bremont fell ill and Brandt nursed her. Marriott gives you, dear reader, the hint that maybe Brandt actually caused the illness, but Vermont herself never suspected this. Captain Ralph Pullen is engaged to Eleanor Layton and has a short affair with Brandt. Again, where we experience the life-sapping power of Brandt. Quoting from Chapter 6, Ralph felt the slight form beside him lean upon his shoulder till their faces almost touched. He threw his arm about her waist. Her hot breath fanned his cheek. Kiss me, she murmured in a dreamy voice. Captain Pullen was not slow to accept the invitation so confidingly extended. What Englishman would be? He turned his face to Harriet Brant's, and her full red lips met his own in a long-drawn kiss that seemed to sap his vitality. As he raised his head again, he felt faint and sick, but, quickly recovering himself, he gave her a second kiss, more passionate, if possible, than the first. The description of the effect on Ralph Pullen continues into the next chapter, Chapter 7. Quoting, Dr. Phillips had not been in the Hotel Dion Dior five minutes before Margaret Pullen took him upstairs to see her baby. She was becoming terribly anxious about her. They encountered Captain Ralph Pullen on the staircase. Hello, young man, and what have you been doing to yourself? exclaimed the doctor. He was certainly looking ill, Ralph, that is. His face was chalky white, and his eyes seemed to have lost their brightness and colour. Then there is Margaret Pullen's baby. The sage Dr. Phillips warns Margaret Pullen against Brandt and feels there is no chance of saving the baby, even as Brandt nurses the baby assiduously, presumably making the little baby worse. Anthony Pennell meets Brandt, introduced by the Baroness at the Baroness's Red House. Anthony falls for Brandt after this one meeting. Shortly afterwards, Anthony Pennell and Captain Ralph Pullen talk about her. Anthony Pennell reveals to Captain Ralph Pullen that Brandt revealed to Ralph's fiancée, Eleanor Layton, that she pities her being engaged to Ralph. This enrages Ralph, who also had spoken poorly of his fiancée Eleanor, saying she was prim and old maid-like. Despite the confrontation, Captain Ralph Pullen muses to himself afterwards about Brandt and Anthony Pennell, quoting, By Jove, thought Ralph, as he too went on his way, I believe old Anthony is smitten with the girl himself, though he's only seen her once. That was the most remarkable thing about her, the ease with which she, se- she seemed to attract, looking so innocent all the while the deadly strength with which she resisted one's efforts to get free again. Perhaps it is as well that I should not meet her. I don't believe I could trust myself. Only speaking of her seems to have revived the old sensation of being drawn against my will. Hypnotised, I suppose the scientists would call it. To be near her, to touch her, to embrace her, until all power of resistance is gone. But I do hope old Anthony is not going to be hypnotised. He's too good for that. The relationship between Anthony Pennell and Harriet Brandt goes from strength to strength. Then we have Bobby Bates, the son of the Baroness or Madame Gabelli, who had a love affair with Brandt and who grew whiter and more languid every day. Bobby grows extremely jealous of Anthony and suffered as he saw the romance between Brandt and Anthony Pennell flourish at his mother's house. So what do we make of this vampire, Harriet Brandt? Obviously Brandt is a fascinating woman, unconscious of her effect on people except perhaps near the end, when she seems to understand that she might be causing illness in her husband. Yes, she's had an unusual background, although it doesn't appear Brandt experienced any hardship herself, even though she was confronted with horrors. 
Her exposure to the mistreatment of slaves seems to have amused her more than anything. Her impact on others seems to be due to what she is and in spite of what she wants, rather than due to any decisions she makes to harm people. On the contrary, she seems to want the best for others, has a lust for life and what is good and beautiful, and is horrified at any hint that she is causing harm to others. Unlike the vampire in Dracula by Stoker, Camilla by Lefanu, and the vampire by Polidori, who are fully aware of the harm they inflict on others, and in some cases delight in the harm they cause, Brandt can form positive relationships and makes headway in winning the love of others. This is partly her power, as Ralph describes it, and is intertwined with her unconscious poisonous qualities. Dr. Phillips is the voice of Victorian reason, warning others. Captain Ralph Pullen also gains clarity after Anthony Pennell falls for Brandt, when Captain Ralph Pullen seems to be relieved to be rid of Brandt's charms and risks. Although Dr. Phillips doesn't refer to Brandt as a vampire, he's unambiguous that Brandt poses serious danger to the health and even life of others. We also have the reaction of Madame or Baroness Gabelli, when she discovers her son, Bobby Bates, dead, here we see what the blood of the vampire means. It means that Brandt has this blood flowing in her veins, and is not the blood spilled by a vampire. The author Marriott shows that the Baroness might be mad, saying, in which she evidently believed in this quote, Even when reiterating the terrible truth in which she evidently believed, Madame Gabelli showed no signs of breaking down, but stood firm, leaning heavily on her stick and trembling in every limb. End of quote. Also, the Baroness is called Madame Gabelli in this chapter. Is this Marriott's way of distancing polite society from claims of folk tales and the irrational fears of the supernatural by renaming her from a Baroness to a Madam? As you can see, Marriott's vampire classic is ambiguous through and through, and this is what makes it all the more gripping and psychological. Thanks for listening. Hit the like button if you found this video enjoyable or helpful and click the link to check out the Osti Classics edition of The Blood of the Vampire at Amazon, which has original illustrations by Jezreel Cuevas and the other vampire stories mentioned in this video, also published by Osti Classics.